we like to think in Western society that, you know, we're, we're in control of our, ourselves and our lives and we live in a very individualistic society. Um, but you said that that's not, that's not so much the case, um, that that's maybe a bit of a delusion. Can you, can you explain that? You know, it's easy to accept the fact that we're not fully in control of our bodies, especially as we get older. Uh, <laughs> our bodies don't always do what we want them to do. But inside our heads, it feels like we've got full control. Right. I can think about whatever I want. I can think about France. I can think about dinner. I can think about anything. And that's a huge mistake because actually what goes on inside our heads is, is far from within our control. We have got this fellow traveler in there, the unconscious mind. And the unconscious mind has an enormous influence over all aspects of our life and we ignore it at our peril. So what, what exactly do you mean by the unconscious mind? Because I, I feel like we live in an age of, you know, um, science has all the answers and, you know, my brain produces these thoughts and I'm autonomous and I'm responsible for my own thinking. And then you say things like unconscious mind and I'm not entirely in control. What exactly are you referring to when you say that? So um, the brain has billions and billions of nerve cells in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's capable of um, doing millions of um, processing computations per second. The conscious mind, um, the rational mind that we are aware of, is only a tiny, tiny sliver of that. It's only able to do, um, I can't remember the exact number, but a few dozen calculations per second. Everything else is outside of our awareness, and it's all of the brain activity that's outside of our awareness that we call the unconscious mind. And in terms of raw processing power, the brain activity we're unaware of is about half a million times as great as the activity that we are aware of. And I can give you some examples. Yeah, that would be um, great. You know, there are extraordinary examples and there are everyday examples. And, and I think it would be helpful to start with the extraordinary okay, examples. Okay, let's do it. All right. So um, we've all played sports. You know, we're not professional athletes, but we've all played sports. Right. Some days we're on, right? Mm -hmm. Have you ever been so on that you feel like you can't do anything wrong? Uh, the, and it's effortless. Oh, yeah. Right? You are killing it, whether it's tennis <laughs> or whatever. It's almost as if you can read the mind of your opponent. They right. have no chance at all. Every shot hits its goal. Everything is done with precision. How do you make that happen? Uh, I think what my initial response would be like practice, you know, a lot of training. Uh, maybe I slept well the night before. Yeah. All of those things may make it more likely to happen but you never know, right? Right. And if you look at professional athletes, they practice every day. Uh, they are very careful about what they eat. They're very careful about their sleep. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they can't do anything right. Other times they give an artistic performance out on the field. They have absolutely no control over that. And that's the unconscious mind. It's the unconscious mind that determines whether you're going to have a great day or a terrible day. Um, we can see this. We can see this in almost any discipline. Um, think about creativity. I, I'm sure as you're thinking about these shows, every once in a while, out of the blue, you're hit with an idea, and you're like, "Oh my god, <laughs> that's an amazing idea!" That show is one of those ideas. <laughs> <laughs> and when that idea hits you, it's very different than say grinding your way through a spreadsheet to right. calculate some outcome. Any time of day or night, I can sit down at a computer and grind my way through a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. I have control over that, conscious, voluntary control. A creative idea, on the other hand, I have absolutely no control over whatsoever. That's the unconscious mind. Wow, that's that's quite powerful. I'm going to ask you a question that I think was more popular maybe a few years ago. Um, I think it's been cleared up since then, but there's this, been po this popular idea in the media that we don't use our entire brain processing power and we use something like... I think the number that goes around is like 10%. Um, how accurate is that statement? 0% accurate. <laughs> All right, just think of it this way. Okay, yeah. Let's say that we didn't use 90% of our brain and I was unlucky enough to have a stroke and lost 10% of my brain. You're not going to hear me say, oh, no problem. That was the 90% I wasn't using. <laughs> you have a stroke, you're going to feel it. Right. But I think it does speak to the fact that we have direct conscious voluntary control over less than 1% of our brain and all the rest is out of our control. And in some ways, 
that's the most powerful part of our brain, the part we can't control. Wow. So you gave the example of elite athletes, right? And you said that um, they can do all this training, they can do everything right in preparation that increases the likelihood yes. um, that they'll have one of those, you know, artistic performances. But then you see some of these athletes who show up consistently. Um, they're always given artistic performances. They're so reliable. Um, can you attribute that to their unconscious or do they have a better relationship with their unconscious? Um, how do you account for like those types of behaviors? Right, right. So... The unconscious is unpredictable. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes it's consistent, sometimes it's inconsistent. And um, we, are, we are born with certain abilities that are expressed partially conscious, partially unconscious. Those abilities can be brought out through our experiences or they can be suppressed. Right. These people, people like Michael Jordan, right. um, they're just born that way. Uh, <laughs> you know, I don't care how much you practice, you can't be like Michael Jordan unless you're born that way. So I think he just he just won the lottery in that respect. Okay. Um, so is there a relationship between the conscious and unconscious mind or are we just kind of doomed to this um, fate that our unconscious provides to us at seemingly random occurrences? It, it's, it's a complex relationship. Right. And as I discuss in the book, it can be a friendly relationship in which you try to learn about your unconscious um, you, you try to see things from its perspective, which is so different from the conscious perspective. You, you can work on that relationship, make it a better relationship so that the two cooperate better. Or you can have a very hostile relationship with your unconscious mind, um, fight against its influence, maybe even deny that it exists and try to pretend that you are a 100% rational creature whose behavior is fully based on choices that you make. So when you say it's influence, it almost sounds like there's this secondary person in your head. Yeah. Um, is the unconscious you or what is you? So when I think of myself, I think of me and I'm autonomous and I make decisions and I can process information and I have these interests. Um, is my unconscious self also me? You know, um, when I say I, like I enjoyed that movie. Right. Um, the Latin word for I is ego. In English, that has a negative connotation, you know, about being self-centered. Right. But psychologists use that Latin word ego neutrally to simply refer to who we refer to, excuse me, when I say I. And so I might say, okay, I'm just my conscious mind and that's all. Right. But I would um, propose that we take a broader view on who we are and say that who we are as an individual is both this I that we identify with and this other part of ourself that is alien, foreign, and unknown right now, but we can get to know it better.